now we discuss what are the important questions in the unit 1 the basics that we completed on 22nd of this month now what is the first question regarding the unit 1 the first question is binomial nomenclature was popularized by now you have to observe the options one is john ray and the second one is a p d candoli third one is ernest mayer and the fourth one is carol selenius now we have to discuss this question regarding the botany the binomial nomenclature was first proposed by casper bahin but here the question is binomial nomenclature was popularized by the carolus linnaeus carolus linnaeus is the father of taxonomist father of taxonomist carolus linnaeus popularized binomial nomenclature in the 10th edition of system on naturae now move for the next question linnaeus described binomial nomenclature now as we observe the carolus linnaeus he wrote two books systema naturae and species plantarum systema naturae has 12 volumes in the 10th volume of systema naturae mr carolus linnaeus introduced and popularized the binomial nomenclature now what is the answer for this question now we have to guess answer for this question the 10th edition of systema naturae that is the third option now we go for the next question in felis leo followed by capital letter l now here the capital letter l indicates the name of here as we observe the felis leo the felis indicate the genus name leo indicates the species name that is followed by the discoverer name now here the leo followed by capital l that capital l letter indicates the name of language species and the division subspecies and scientist now we guess the answer for this question is l indicates the answer is the fourth option that is called the scientist now we go for the next question according to the law of priority the valid generic or species name is the now we have to discuss what is the law of priority if a genus or species is given different names by different persons the earliest one is valid that we call it as the law of priority now in this question according to the law of priority the valid generic or species name is the now you have to guess one option is the recent name second is name with less number of letters now third one is earliest name and the fourth one is name with more letters now what is the answer for this question is the answer three that is earliest name now we move for the next question the taxon or category or level the taxon phylum was introduced by now what are the options given linnaeus hyman ekel and mayer we know very well the phylum it is a taxon created by Haeckel and phylogeny explained in the form of diagrams also explained by Haeckel. The word ecology also proposed by Haeckel. Now for this question that axon phylum was introduced by the correct answer is Ernest Haeckel. Now move for the next question. What is the basic unit of taxonomy? Now what is the meaning of taxonomy? It is the identification nomenclature and classification now here what is the basic unit of taxonomy here that taxonomy means classification for the classification what are the main taxons kingdom phylum class order family genus and species now for this question what is the correct answer what is the basic unit of taxonomy that is the species so that the answer is one now we move for the next question the kingdom proposed by copeland for prokaryotes what are the prokaryotes prokaryotes distinct nucleus without nuclear membrane all prokaryotes come under the kingdom monera here the question is the kingdom proposed by copeland for prokaryotes one we call it as protista and the second one is monera 
third one is animalia and the fourth one is plantae now as we observe the answer for this question is copy land according to the copy land classification the prokaryotes come under you have to guess the answer that is said to be the munira now we move for the next question choose the correct sequence of taxonomic categories now what are the taxonomic categories kingdom phylum class order family genus and species now here the question is choose the correct sequence of taxonomic categories one is order class subspecies family now as we observe what is the arrangement of these categories the class followed by order followed by family followed by subspecies now for this question the answer is one here answer is one b that is the class it is followed by order it is followed by family it is followed by the subspecies now we go for the next question arrange the following in ascending order what is the ascending order we move up descending order comes down now arrange the following in a ascending order one we call it as deuterostomia and the second one is enterocoelomata and the third one is bilateria and the next one is anthropoidea now you have to imagine these given options are related to the taxonomic position of man now you have to arrange these categories in a ascending order first we go for the anthropoidea above anthropoidea what is present the enterocoelomata and above enterocoelomata what is present the deuterostomia above deuterostomia what is present bilateria now you have to observe the answer for this question one in the first option here the d anthropoidea above anthropoidea enterocoelomata above enterocoelomata deuterostomia above deuterostomia what is present bilateria now we go for the next question arrange that axons or categories in the descending order with respect to that axonomy of man now you observe the anthropoidea and eutheria and hominidae and vertebrata now you have to imagine anthropoidea that is the suborder and eutheria that is infra class and hominidae that is the family and vertebrata that is the subphylum here what they asked in this question arrange that axons in the descending order that means from top to bottom now what is the first one is as we observe the first one is vertebrata that is followed by eutheria that is followed by anthropoidea that is followed by hominidae now you have to guess the answer for this question is answer 2 now here in the answer to the d vertebrata that is followed by eutheria that is followed by anthropoidea that is followed by hominidae now we move for the next question now the two are matched that is the match of the following now in the list one buffon the second one is bernard and the third one is owen and the fourth one is cuvier now we move for the list to two homeostasis natural selection comparative anatomy and the natural history and homology where we discussed in the unit 1 in the unit 1 after completing the introductory part we discussed what are the contributions of the persons under this category we got a question here here the buffon the buffon is concerned with the natural history what about the bernard concerned with the homeostasis owen concerned with the homology cuvier that is compared to anatomy now you have to guess the answer for this question is answer 2 that is buffon natural history bernard homeostasis owen homology cuvier that is the compared to anatomy next question adhara species plantarum it is a very very important question we are having an idea regarding the carolus linnaeus carolus linnaeus what are the characters of the carolus linnaeus carolus linnaeus popularized binomial nomenclature 
Carolus Linnaeus considered as the father of taxonomy. Carolus Linnaeus wrote two books. One is Species Plantarum and the next one is Year the Species Plantarum and the Systema Naturae. Here the asked question is who is the author of Species Plantarum? The first option is author of, uh, father of evolution. The second one is founder of modern systematics. And the third one is the father of British natural history. And the fourth one is the founder of British natural history. Now you have to guess the answer for this question. Adhara species plantarum Carolus Linnaeus. Carolus Linnaeus is considered as the father of taxonomy as well as the founder of modern systematics. So the answer is second. Now we move for the third question. Arrange the following in the ascending order based on genetic divergence. Now as we observe the taxons, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. As we move from species to kingdom, the similarities decrease. As we move from kingdom to species, the similarities increasing. Now here, arrange the following in the ascending order based on genetic divergence. Ascending order that is moving up. Now the first one is Anthropoidea that is suborder and Theria that is subclass and Nathostomata that is the superclass and Hominine that is the subfamily and Hominidae Hominidae that is the uh, super family, hominoidae, super family. And the next one is primates. Now you have to arrange these given categories in the ascending order. Now you have to observe the answer for this question is <coughs> answer 4. Now you observe answer 4. That is the D. Hominine. Above the hominine, what is present? Hominide. Above hominidae, what is present the anthropoidea? Above anthropoidea, what is present the primates? Above primates, what is present the theria? Above theria, what is present the nathostomata or gnathostomata? Now we move for the next question. Statement. The subspecies of a species are not reproductively isolated. Again it is repeated. The subspecies of a species are not reproductively isolated. Now, what is the statement 2? The subspecies of a species produce the sterile offsprings when they undergo interbreeding. Now, you have to observe this question. The statement 1. The subspecies of a species are not reproductively isolated. Here, the meaning is the subspecies can interbreed. One subspecies can reproduce with another subspecies. So that the subspecies of a species are not reproductively isolated. So here the statement 1 is true. What about the statement 2? The subspecies of a species produce sterile offsprings. It is wrong because whenever the subspecies undergo interbreeding, they produce fertile offsprings. Now you have to guess the answer for this question 3. That is S1 is true, S2 is false. Now move for the next question. <clears throat> what is the basic unit of classification? Again it is repeated. Now as we observe the plant classification and animal classification. In order to classify the organisms, what are the main taxons? Kingdom, phylum, class, order and next family, genus, species. Here what is the question? What is the basic unit of classification? The answer is species. It is also called the smallest unit. It is also called the fundamental unit. So what is the answer for this question? One. Now we move for the next question. The branch of genetics that deals with the practice phenotypic improvement of humans after birth is called. Where we discussed this question. Relation between the geology and other sciences. Eugenics. 
the application of genetics for the welfare of mankind but here the question is the branch of genetics that deals with the practice phenotypic improvement of humans after birth is called one option is euphenix the second option is eugenics the third one is genetic engineering and the fourth one is anthropology now you have to guess the answer for this question is euphenix that is answer one now move for the next question the method of representing phylogeny by means of trees or branching the diagrams is introduced by. Now, as we observe the Ernest Haeckel, the word ecology proposed by Ernest Haeckel and phylogeny explained in the form of diagrams by Ernest Haeckel. Phylum taxon is created by Haeckel. Now, what is the answer for this question? First option, Mayer. Second option, Emerson. Third option, Ekel and the fourth option is Linnaeus. Now, what is the correct answer for this question? Ekel. Now, we move for the next question. Which of the following branch deals with the search for extraterrestrial life and the effects of extraterrestrial surroundings on the living organisms? Now, for this question, how to get the information? As we observe the manned biosphere, one component we call it as atmosphere. It is classified into troposphere, stratosphere, ionosphere, exosphere. Above exosphere, we have to discuss extraterrestrial life. Now, here what is the asking question? Which of the following branch concerned with the search for the extraterrestrial life and the effects of extraterrestrial surroundings on the living organisms? One is geography, that is the study of distribution of animals. Biogeography, that is the study of distribution of both plants and animals. And the next one is space biology. Now here the answer is you have to guess the third one, the space biology. It is also called the exobiology. Now we move for the next question. Enterocelomates are characterized by how to get the answer. Now you have to observe the options, spiral and indeterminate. Radial and indeterminate, spiral and determinate, radial and determinate. Now, how to select the answer for this question? If we are having an idea regarding the enterocelomates, what are the enterocelomates? Echinodermata, emicardata, cardata. What are the invertebrate enterocelomata? Echinodermata. What is the biggest phylum in the enterocelomata? Cardata. Now, you have to guess the answer for this question. During the development of enterocelomates, what type of cleavage is going to observe? Radial and indeterminate. What is meant by radial? The cleavage occurs on the radius. What is the meaning of indeterminate? The feta blastomere is not known earlier. Now move for the next question. Assertion or the statement. Sibling species are morphologically similar. The reason sibling species are reproductively isolated. Now, regarding the species concept, we learned one important point is the species. One species do not reproduce with other species. So, the species is said to be reproductively isolated. Here, what is the statement or assertion? Sibling species are morphologically similar. 100% correct. And the sibling species are reproductively isolated. Now, you have to guess the answer for this question. Now, the second option. As we observe, both the assertion and reason are true. But the reason is not the correct explanation of assertion. Because sibling species are morphologically similar. But one species do not reproduce with another species. So, they are reproductively isolated. These are the important questions regarding the basics or the unit one what we learned on 22nd. Now, we have to discuss some important points regarding the invertebrate phyla from protozoa, from protozoa to platy elementis. Now, on 23rd, we discussed the invertebrate of phyla from protozoa to platy elementis. Now, we have to discuss some important questions regarding the examination point of view. Now, the first one is, 
the term protozoa was coined by here what type of related questions are going to ask in the examination first of all we have to observe this question the term protozoa the term protozoa was coined by or proposed by one option is antony van leeuwenhoek second one is hyman the third one is goldfuss and the fourth one is ekel now here the protozoa word was proposed by goldfuss in the same way biology word was proposed by jb lamarck philosophy geologic book written by jb lamarck anilida word was proposed by jb lamarck what about the antony van leeuwenhoek protozoans first identified by antony van leeuwenhoek now move for the next question which of the following is an example of a colonial protozoan now regarding the general characters we discussed solitary colonial what is meant by solitary the organism lives single what is meant by colonial the organism lives in groups now here the question is which of the following is an example of a colonial protozoan one example is euglena no doubt it is solitary lives in fresh water third option you have to observe amoeba it is solitary lives in fresh water and giardia that is intestinal parasite now in the elimination process what is the best answer for this question is proterospongia proterospongia is a colonial protozoan it is the connecting link between protozoa and porifera now move for the next question body symmetry is spherical now as we observe the symmetry already we discussed a symmetry no symmetry the second one is spherical symmetry or homoxial the next one is radial symmetry the next one is biradial pentaradial and the last one is bilateral symmetry here what is the asked body symmetry is spherical that means the body is spherical on all sides and how many division planes many now here regarding the protozoa spherical symmetry one option is actinophrys and the second one is acinata and the third one is giardia and the fourth one is amoeba now you have to observe amoeba there is no symmetry now acinata come under the subphylum ciliophora now giardia that is the parasite now you have to guess answer for this question is the first option actinophrys now move for the next question unique system of sponges produce these structures unique system of sponges now as we observe the kingdom animalia the first sub kingdom is parazoa under this one phylum is present that is called the porifera in order to kept any animal under the phylum porifera that organism must possess the canal system the canal system is also called aquiferous system now regarding this question what is the unique system of sponges produce these structures now you have to observe the answers are canal system hemocelomic system gastrovascular system ambulacral system i think you already guessed the answer for this question is the canal system now move for the next question sponges reproduce asexually by first we have to observe the options encystement budding binary fission and multiple fission now as we observe the sponges in the sponges some are fresh water sponges during summer season the fresh water dries up so that all fresh water sponges and the sponges live in shallow marine waters how they reproduce asexually in these fresh water sponges and shallow marine water sponges asexual reproduction is brought by internal buds the internal buds are also called gemmules by this information now you have to choose the correct answer what is the answer for this question is the second one that we call it as budding now move for the next question fresh water and a few marine sponges produce these structures now first of all you have to observe the options first one is spores 
second one is microspores third one is gemmules the fourth one is megaspores now immediately you have to guess the answer for this question is the answer is gemmules that means in all fresh water sponges and a few marine shallow water sponges during unfavorable conditions they undergo a sexual reproduction brought by internal buds called the gemmules now move for the next question polymorphism is seen in one of the following nidarians now what is meant by polymorphism as we observe the phylum nidaria polyp and medusa zooids are generally present but in addition to the polyp and medusa what are the other zooids gonozooid it performs the reproduction gastrozooid it performs nutrition dactylozooid it helps capturing the prey and production now here what is the question polymorphism what is meant by polymorphism the presence of more than two zooids where we have to observe the polymorphism in the phylum nidaria three classes are present hydrozoa scyphozoa and anthozoa in the scyphozoa the dominant zooid is medusa what about the polyp that is very much reduced and anthozoa the main zooid is polyp now what is the option is hydrozoa now you have to observe polymorphism is seen in one of the following nidarians here the option is hydra in the hydra only one zooid is present polyp fungia and the third one is phygalia and the fourth one is pennatula now here what is the best answer for this question is phygalia that is popularly known as portuguese man of war in the phygalia as well as in the halistema we have to observe the polymorphism what is the significance of polymorphism the division of labor what is meant by division of labor the work is shared by different zooids now we discuss next question germ cells are derived from ectoderm in which of the following examples now as we observe the nidaria one class is hydrozoa second class is scyphozoa third one is anthozoa in the kingdom animalia only in the phylum nidaria the germ cells are derived either from ectoderm or from endoderm from platyhelminthes to human being always the germ cells are derived from mesoderm here the question is the germ cells are derived from ectoderm the answer is hydrozoa in the hydrozoa what are the examples here one option is hydra the second one is obelia the third one is alistema now by this information you have to immediately get the answer for this question is the fourth option that is hydra obelia halistema they come under the hydrozoa in the hydrozoa germ cells derived from ectoderm whereas in remaining two classes scyphozoa anthozoa the germ cells are derived from endoderm now move for the next question asexual reproduction through regeneration is present in now as we observe the phylum platyhelminthes in the phylum platyhelminthes three classes are present one we call it as turbellaria second one we call it as trematoda and the third one we call it as cystoda now as we observe the phylum platyhelminthes in the class turbellaria we have to observe sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction here the question is asexual reproduction through regeneration is observed in one we call it as fasciola but it is class trematoda tinea come under the cystoda fourth option echinococcus come under cystoda now what is the leftover answer for this question is the third option that we call it as dugesia it is popularly known as planaria come under the class turbellaria now the next question free living flatworms belong to the class now in the phylum platyhelminthes three classes the first one is turbellaria only in the class turbellaria the free living flatworms are present what about the trematoda and cystoda in trematoda ecto endoparasites in cystoda all are endoparasites based on this information now you have to choose the answer for this question free living flatworms belong to the class trematoda in the trematoda all are parasites cystoda all are parasites turbellaria 
here the free living flatworms are present. What about the nematoda? You know very well that is another phylum. So, for this question the answer is turbal area. Now, move for the next question. Identify the character not related to unsegmented flatworms with neodermis. Now, how to get the answer for this question? Here, neodermis. What is the meaning of neodermis? Nothing but the tegument. Where tegument present in the phylum platyhel is trematoda and cystoda. Now, we have to observe this question. Identify the character not related to unsegmented flatworms with neodermis. Now, in the turbal area, there is no segmentation. But in the turbal area, there is no neodermis and trematoda the body is covered by tegment called neodermis in the trematoda segment absent now you have to guess the answer for this question here the first one is presence of suckers in the trematoda suckers are present and absence of gut in the trematoda elementary canal present divides into two third one polyembryonic one embryo gives rise to many embryos third one complex reproductive system now, in these four options, which is not related to unsegmented flatworms with neodermis, that is, come under the trematoda. Now, we guess the answer for this question is absence of elementary canal because the remaining three options related to trematoda. In the trematoda, elementary canal present, but here, absence of elementary canal is not related. Next question. Match the following. Simple polar filament. The next one, endodiogeny. And the third one is amoeboid spores. And the fourth one is apical complexa or complex. This side, haplosporidium. Second one, plasmodium. Third one, nosema. And the fourth one, toxoplasma. As we observe these examples, we are getting one idea. Phylum protozoa is classified into sarcomastigophora, sporozoa, nidospora, and next the ciliophora. Now, the subphylum sporozoa, it is also called epicomplexa. In the nidospora subphylum, we discussed the polar capsule and polar filament. In the nidospora, microsporidia and mixosporidia are present. Now, you have to observe single polar filament. Single polar filament is concerned with nosema because it comes under the nidospora. Endodiogeny during the reproduction, the parent cell converted into two daughter cells and the parent cell disintegrates. Concerned with toxoplasma, that is the second class of sporozoa. Amoeboid spores in the subphylum sporozoa. The third class is haplosporidia. Here the example is haplosporidium. In the haplosporidium, what are the spores? Amoeboid spores. Now, the next one is epicomplexa. What is the epicomplexa? It is the structure help to enter into the host body. Such epicomplexa is present in sporozoa. Here, what is the example for the sporozoa? That we call it as the plasmodium. Now, here, what is the answer for this question is answer 2. Now, next question. Nidarians with A. craspidot medusa are characterized by. We learned already in the Nidaria A. craspidot and craspidot. What is meant by A. craspidot medusa? Here, the velum absent. What is the craspidot medusa? Velum present. What is meant by velum? It is a muscular structure. Because of the contraction and relaxations of the velum, the medusa freely swims in the water. Here, what is the question? Nidarians with A. craspidot medusa are characterized by. First option, A. cellular mesoglia. And the second one is only epidermal nidocytes. And the fourth, third one is partitioned silentirons in polyp and the fourth one is aconchia with numerous nidocytes. Now, you have to observe the answer for this question is answer 2 only epidermal nidocytes because in the hydrojova 
as we observe in the hydrojova, a craspidotomate juza. In the hydrojova, as we observe the mesoglia, the mesoglia also acellular. Now, here the two options are correct. Acellular mesoglia as well as in the hydrojova, the germ cells are derived from epidermis or ectodermis. Now, now next question. Sarcodines, which have siliceous shells, also possess sarcodines. Now, in the phylum protojova, as we observe the sarcomastigophora, one superclass is mastigophora. The second one we call it as opalinata, and the third one we call it as the sarcodina. In the sarcodina, three classes we learned. One we call it as the rhizopodia. Second one we call it as pyroplasmia, and the third one we call it as actinopodia. In the rhizopodia, generally what type of locomotory organs? Lobopodia. Whereas in the pyroplasmia, the locomotory organelle are totally absent because they are parasites. Now in the actinopodia, we have to observe the axopodia. Now here the question is, sarcodines with siliceous cells also possess. The answer is reticulopodia, axopodia, myxopodia and mastigonyms. Based on this information, you have to guess answer for this question is that is second option axopodia because in the actinopodia class the shell is made by SiO2. So, in the actinopodia what are the locomotory organelle the axopodia. Now, move for the next question. Nidarians with siphonoglyphs do not exhibit what are the siphonoglyphs? These are the ciliated structures present on either side of the mouth. Now, here the question is nidarians with siphonoglyphs. Where we have to observe the siphonoglyphs in the class Anthojava? Nidarians with siphonoglyphs do not exhibit as we observe the Anthojava. Now, the first option cellular mesoglia, chambered gastrovascular cavity and biradial symmetry and the polymorphism. Here the question is nidarians with siphonoglyphs do not exhibit. Now, the answer is class anthojova. In the class anthojova, the mesoglia is cellular. So, the first one is correct. In the anthojova, the gastrovascular cavity or cilentiron is divided into chambers. The second one is also correct. And the anthojova exhibits mainly what type of symmetry? Biradial symmetry. But what is not related is the polymorphism. The polymorphism is mainly concerned with what type of class? The hydrojova. So, here the answer is the fourth option. Now, we move for the next question. The larva of parajovans which live in all types of waters is now here how to get the answer for this question para jovans kingdom animalia is classified into two sub kingdoms para jova and umeta jova para jova under this only one phylum is present that is porifera the porifera is classified into calcarea exactinida and demospondia in the calcarea what are the larva forms coeloblastla and amphiblastla all calcareans live in marine water what about the exact tenirida? Exact tenirida larval form is trichimella, exclusively marine forms. Now, what is the remaining class? The demospongia. The demospongia members present in freshwater as well as marine water. So, in the demospongia, what is the larval form? Parenchymula. Now, you have to observe the larva of parajovans which live in all types of water means freshwater and marine water. Now, the answer is one is ampiblastula. Trichimella, parenchymula, coeloblastula. Now the answer is parenchymula. Now the next question. The only metajovan phylum which lacks true embryological germ layers also have these features. The only metajovan phylum which lacks the embryological germ layers. Now, as we observe the multicellular animals, the first primitive multicellular animals, the porifera. In the porifera, no germ layers. No ectoderm, endoderm. So, here what is the larval form associated with this question that we call it as coeloblastula. Now, we move for the next question. 
nuclear dimorphism is seen. What is meant by nuclear dimorphism? Two different nuclei present. Where two different nuclei are present in the subphylum ciliophora? One is macro, one is micro. Now here options are verticella, opalina, giardia and nidosporum. Here the answer is the verticella. And the next question is spores with polar filaments are produced by where polar capsules and polar filaments nidospora. Now here the answer is sporojoans, ciliophora, sarcodines and nidosporans. The answer is the nidosporans. Now the last question is find the correct match. Now as we observe Aurelia, it is skyphojoa, jellyfish, siphonoglyphs. Here the question is find the correct match. Aurelia, no siphonoglyphs. Hydra, gemules. Gemules are not associated with Hydra. Metridium, Aconsium. The Metridium, Commander Anthojova. In the Anthojova, we observe the presence of Aconsium. It is the extension of mesenteries. So that Tinea, Rhabdides. Rhabdides are not associated with the Tinea. They are associated with the Turbal area. Now here, what is the correct match is the Metridium associated with Aconsium. Now, in the next class, we have to discuss the remaining parts of animal organization.